Hello, friends. Здравствуйте, товарищи. We are We are in the Western Cape of South Africa, and we are here to inspect many of the air seeders in the area and see where we can help them do a better job growing this, these crops, these fields, right? Like the ones behind us here. We've got Eugene from Russia, and we've got Giannis from AGL Systems here in South Africa. Let's see what we can find out here, and let's see what we can do for them. Check this out, there's actually a John Deere air cart over here. It's a 1910, this is a 250 bushel, three tank, tow between cart. And this particular farmer, we're about maybe 30 to 60 miles or kilometers maybe from, from Hermanas. And uh, this particular farmer pulls a hoe drill and puts crops like wheat, canola, barley, oats, things like that, small grains. It's very rocky over here and they certainly have a lot of hills. They got mountains, so they got to navigate some of that. Just like our growers all over the world that use John Deere carts, they have similar issues with corrosion when they're using fertilizer. So let's see what this cart has, and maybe you who are watching this who are in different parts of the world can get some ideas or see what other growers um, have issues with or do to combat those issues. All right, I know the light is low, but this is a three tank cart, like I said before, and he uses fertilizer on it. There's some corrosion here just like you'd see in a lot of places when you use fertilizer. So we've got a fair bit of corrosion on the top plate and in the seals there, in the meter housing. There's no holes yet, but it's certainly gonna get there pretty soon. You can see a lot of corrosion here starting. We've got some pipes that are getting holes in them. This particular farmer added a, an additional tank because they've got problems with slugs or snails and they need to kill them. They put slug bait, it's called, or snail bait. He added an additional hopper to put in a small amount broadcasted behind the cedar. And it's pretty neat. I've never seen anything like this, but this is a two run system, very small meter housing, but a very unique custom made hopper. Really cute. Something that maybe if you're needing, maybe we can do for guys around the world. Something else I noticed is they've had to reinforce this frame. Um, we've seen this in Russia and some other parts where it gets a lot of load on the frame and you can have it fail in this part here and all of a sudden your whole undercarriage will fall and destroy a bunch of stuff. So this farmer has done a real nice job of making it look almost factory, but adding these reinforcement plates, beams all the way through to the hitch and, and really reinforcing that frame. It's hard to see, but there's certainly corrosion going on up in the conveyor there. These are all things that we can help with when we uh, change it to stainless steel. What do you change to stainless steel? Oh, anything that's corroding. We put some inside here yeah, so that shut off the... the you did? We put a stainless steel thing inside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So does it work now? Yeah, it works. It didn't work. The plastic thing doesn't work. It, it bends. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, twists and seas, I was telling yeah. Giannis that. Yeah. So they're using this air seeder. It looks very similar to like the old Concord style. The tines, as some people call it. You got your walking beam packers. Here's your seed and fertilizer towers. There's a couple towers for your, for your snail bait. We're talking about a wireless blockage system from Intelligent Ag would solve their monitoring issues. And they can monitor all these towers. They can monitor the snail bait. They can monitor the, the seed and fertilizer and be a really good upgrade for them. So they run some John Deere equipment here, putting up a new building. It seems like they value and are able to put things under, under a roof or in a shed. It just really helps everything stay in better condition and function longer. The mountains in the background, it's so beautiful out here. And uh, if you ever get a chance to go to South Africa, I highly recommend it. Hermanas area is where we're at, a little southeast of, of uh, Cape Town. It's just a real nice area. This is open and the seats is getting out here, there, and it's a split boot. Okay. And the seats goes in there, and the fertilizer goes in there. Okay. And on it to a split, onto the but sides. It, it, it looks like this means like it's self-made, yeah? yeah? Or yeah. you welded it. No, no, they, yeah, yeah, they, that's an old one. They, they just, they, they welded, welded, reinforcing, welded yeah, yeah. But it's been... So it's repaired or self-made? Yeah, it's been repaired. It doesn't, one should be removed. You gotta put a new one in. So there's a shank that opens up the ground. This wing creates a, a shelf. 
the seeds drop in behind here, and the fertilizer goes down the middle. Oh, here's the shank. Here's the shank. That sits in front like that. All right, we've stopped by another farm, and I got Willie here and his dad, Tace. And they've got an 1895 air seeder, which is very common with us, of course, in, in the parts of the world that we service. They've got some really neat things on their air seeder that I want you to see, and some really unique ways to solve problems, such as side hill issues, uh, crabbing as we might call it, and there's some really innovative ways to deal with those issues. So let's go take a look. So it's a 30 foot machine, and that means it's got 36 seed rows and 18 mineral banders. First of all, when I look at this, we've got a liquid tank on it. This is something that some farmers have talked to us about doing or are already doing, and they wanna know how to do it. You can see the different manifolds here on the towers. So they're putting liquid down through this hose here. We've got some Eric's row cleaners here to help move that trash and maybe rocks out of the way. They did upgrade to the Pro Series kit from John Deere, so you've got a improved Press wheel, we've got the Pro Series seed boot, Pro Series tabs, and of course those kits come with discs and springs. Um, but one thing that they're having issues with, that a lot of you guys have issues with, is a heavy duty closing wheel spring is needed because these springs break all the time. You'll notice that there's a Martin 20 point wheel equivalent here. Uh, in the back on the seating rows, we've got the liquid being applied right behind the press wheel here. Or something that they've Upgraded as well on the downforce is the Xapta Uniforce system, and they really like that. It maintains good downforce to the rows across the whole machine, and it's not so dependent on just the downforce of the whole rank or rock shaft. Here's the pump for the liquid manifold setup. They've got different liquid options here. Probably put some different things in from with the mineral banders and then with the seed and fertilizer. They've actually tried to do high concentrations of liquid on the mineral banders to try it, to see if it did better. And they're determining that this year. Been doing pretty good. They really like the liquid option, what it can do and, and the consistency of it. Here's a trailing wheel to help indicate where they're at on the side hill if the machine is drifting. You'll notice an indicator up there. And what that does is it indicates how much this, this uh, hydraulically driven hitch is is from side to side or, or off of center. And why do they have to have this? Well, it's because they've got a lot of hills here. If you watch these videos or these uh, clips from my drone flying around, you'll see there's mountains around and they've got a lot of hills, mountains to navigate, and they don't always or can't always go up and over them straight on. So they definitely got to be able to steer the hitch, steer the machine with the hitch. This tells them where they're at. And then that wheel, that wheel in the back that's trailing is something that they came up with that has sensors on it and an indicator in the cab to tell them where they're actually at. If the machine is off one way or the other, it, uh, there's lights that come on or maybe alarms that come on and then they can steer to adjust for that. I not talk about the orifice, but this is just a, um, a one-way valve. Okay. And this tube doesn't have... Um, this tube doesn't, uh, it's, a, it's a tube and it's a friction tube. So that keeps the pressure equalized between all yeah, the... So his strainer as in like uh, orifice to regulate pressure. Yeah. So you this, still have this, a screen, this but... This regulates the pressure and there's no screen that can get dirty or clogged. Oh, wow. Yeah. I noticed that the, the hose, the hole in the hose is very small. Yeah, yeah. And that's... Because the length of this tube and the thickness of that hole, it was, was calculated. Ah. Uh, yeah. It, Very nice. It, yeah, the number of units determines the length of the tube and the friction so that you don't have to have a screen and the pressure is equalized between the units. And that is really getting rid of the maintenance issues yeah. of liquid. Yeah. Maybe some of you have seen this where you've got uh, strainers that plug or screens that plug and then you're not getting consistent pressure or flow. So these guys have rocks and I've been told, even at that farm show we were at in the previous video, that guys cannot run disc drills here because there's so many rocks that it would just destroy the disc drill and it doesn't do a good job. So they usually go with a hoe drill or a precision hoe. But these guys actually took this dozer, 
1979-ish Komatsu, and they've ripped all their ground over the years. Only need to do it once, I guess. They rip it and get those stones out of there, dig them up, and then they haul them away. Now they can get in with a disc drill and not have so many rocks to go over, through, whatever. All right, over here we've got the 250 bushel three tank cart. They do run it as a six run double shoot and it's got a conveyor on it. This machine's a little older than the drill. This is an older cart, but it's still working well. They've added some stainless steel half with disconnects inside, so then they're not having twisting seized disconnects. They've had to change a few pipes and some pieces in the meters to keep those things hole free, working. Um, holes happen from the corrosion, as you know. They're getting good performance out of it because they're keeping up on it. That's the important thing is you got to keep up on the maintenance because if you don't, you're going to have issues and it's not going to seed properly. Crops look pretty good out here. We've got wheat in the distance that way. And then we got some canola over there. Wheat barley over there. We've seen areas of sheep, but uh, I'll get you, uh, I'll get you guys some footage from the air too while we're here and see what their crops look like. Thanks so much for having me. Cheers, man. Thanks. Yeah. Nice to meet you. And these guys actually reached out to us uh, not too long ago, a couple years ago, to see what some of these solutions would cost. And uh, so they were aware of Ready already before I even came. My reputation precedes me, I guess. But really appreciate you guys. And thanks for sharing what you're doing on your operations so we can all learn as well. Did you know that this tractor was made right in Fargo, North Dakota. Maybe you should start, oh. Jealous. Jealous, yeah. Yeah, jealous. Yeah, jealous. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 oh.